We have a lot to talk about on the show. But let's talk about the banking industry. What is the view from the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, the president in council, which you know is joining us this morning from our Abuja studios? Quite a lot in recent days and weeks from the Central Bank of Nigeria, and in particular the banking industry. Which you know is good to see you, sir. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Bosin. Thank you. I uh, hope you enjoyed your weekend, sir. Yes, I did. So, let's hit the ground running. When you look at the banking industry today, what do you consider as the big issues for the sector? Well, the big issue for the sector remains uh, the threat of disintermediation. Uh, for me, that's uh, um, um, the front, on the front burner. How do we uh, improve uh, uh, customers' experience? Uh, their pain points, how do we re reduce their pain points, uh, driving with technology, uh, leveraging on technology rather. Um, I think that's, you know, uh, the issue for us. How do we also, another uh, very significant uh, contribution that you expect the banking industry is, uh, how do we bring the bank? that is the financial inclusion, um, to, um, um, to the economy so that we can uh, reap the benefit of including them uh, into the system. Why do you think this has been, has been a, a little bit difficult for us to achieve? Is it the structure of the economy? Is it the cost of doing business? Is it technology? Why do you think we're a little bit slow when it comes to our financial inclusion, financial intermediation processes? Yeah, the point clearly for us is that, you know, the, the banks, uh, banking occupies a very special uh, uh, role in the economy. And you need to, for you to have very good, in fact, even the physical policies and monetary policies need to be transmitted through the banks. And so, um, and one of these clearly is that, especially uh, the high, huge unemployment in our system, how do we um, channel credit uh, to those that deserve in it? How do we bring out, you know, reduce the level of poverty uh, through uh, uh, giving them the uh, opportunity to, you know, uh, play in the financial system? That's what we are talking about. Um, some folks have uh, described banks in Nigeria as very cheerful takers but reluctant givers. Why is this so? I, I, see, I think it's a misconception in the sense that... Um, uh, banks are risk aggregators, and in aggregating the risk, they also, in, in terms of, they have to manage the risk uh, because they are not charities. What has happened is that uh, the lending, the borrowing culture, it's been threatened. It has threatened the financial system. Um, so you, you find out that uh, there, there have been that shyness. It, it needed some uh, level of de-risking uh, their play for them to, uh, you know, uh, lend, not collecting. Yes, it's, you know, why are they there? Banks are there to create, uh, to, you know, lend to the economy. They do financial intermediation. But when the structures are not right, the factors are not right, what do we expect them to do? Uh, we've been having huge loan uh, 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 delinquent loans. Uh, we needed to change that. Now that there have been, you know, tweak in the policy, we have tweaked the policy. You will begin to see that banks uh, will play accordingly. Uh, look at the uh, part of the other issues in the banking industry, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lowe. When you talk about cyber fraud, uh, we've seen emergence of fintech within the Nigerian space, you sit at the head of the CIB, and so those folks are your members in the banking industry, so you know how the industry is. So when we look at cyber fraud, uh, fintech, and issues around bank charges, whether on deposit, on withdrawals, or using ATM, uh, or whatever, uh, are these some of the issues that you discuss with your members at the CIBN? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, in fact, you know, we are having the 12th, our annual banking and finance conference. And the theme is the future of the Nigerian banking industry. And clearly for us, what is the future? There has been a disintermediation, especially by the uh, FinTech. Uh, how do incumbents step up their 
uh, strategies to respond to the challenges of the fintech as part of the things we are we are going to look at. Uh, well, of course, the ups, the uh, downside of uh, of uh, the uh, fintech revolution or the technology play is cyber security. Uh, cyber security, cyber fraud is very 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 huge uh, uh, problem. But that has also been addressed various uh, institutions. This is a global uh, a global. Uh, uh, issue. Um, the, the, the banks are investing massively in trying to check all those cyber security. Uh, we were just at the World Banking Conference uh, where the Central Bank Governor of France did explain what they are doing and ditto for um, uh, Makani uh, and his team, what they are doing in terms of uh, cyber security. Uh, in fact, they are collaborating with various national security agencies to ensure that uh, uh, some of which cannot be divulged here now, of the things that are doing to, you know, um, uh, check cyber, security, cyber fraud. And Nigeria is not left out in the play because I know that uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, policy uh, uh, department in Central Bank looking at this. Uh, even the, um, the various players are also um, checking at, uh, you know, looking at how do uh, uh, we review uh, our our defense mechanism. Uh, for us, you see, the, what has happened is that uh, because of the change, disruption uh, in the industry through technology play, it means that learning has to change. Our learning, our response uh, to what we do in banking has to change. And that's why we're having this uh, conference uh, from the 24th to 25th in Abuja here. We are going to discuss quite a lot of it on, on fintech, on, on cyber fraud. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's very huge, a massive uh, uh, investment that we've done to make sure that we get international speakers, both local and international, to you know, educate our members. Because you cannot learn it. Not learning, you cannot remain in ignorance. But I know that we are addressing those issues to make sure that our members are um, I get abreast of what is happening in the global play. And in terms of the bank charges, um, I don't, uh, especially, um, I know there have been complaints uh, about bank charges. But the banks, these are charges that have been uh, approved by the, uh, the regulators. The regulators' interest is to make sure that um, people are not uh, defrauded unnecessarily. So if the regulators approve these charges, it means that they are legitimate. Um, I know that there have been issue of uh, um, charges on the uh, cashless. Uh, this in there have been, you know, but that is just to change behavior. I don't see that as a temp as a permanent. If you don't want those charges, then uh, there to the rules and, uh, and to the policy. Uh, the bank charges, like you know, banks are self-regulating themselves. Unnecessary charges are not, you know, uh, if you have them, these uh, subcommittees uh, of China Institute of Bankers has been working on, you know, uh, mediation between bank and customers, even between banks and banks, to ensure that, you know, we remain true to our uh, our our motto that is trust, because trust is the is the only currency in the world that you don't afford, you cannot afford to lose. That is being done regularly to make sure that we also improve. Uh, the, uh, our relationship between uh, the customer and the banks, and even between the customer uh, the banks and the, uh, the charter institute of bankers. Uh, Mr. Lowell, there was a time in the 80s and early 90s when uh, almost everyone on the street is studying to a professional a CIBN. Uh, in those days, there were CIBN schools and classes everywhere virtually in every building, uh, whatever, under the trees and everywhere. Everybody just wants to be a chartered bankers. Is this still the same way these days? Do you still, do you still have many Nigerians uh, going into professional CIBN examinations? Yeah, this is even, we are having a meteoric increase in, you know, because of the value that they have seen in the, in the certifications. We have the flagship qualification, which is the Association of Charter Institute of Bankers. Uh, that gives you fundamental basic knowledge that you need you know, to do your banking if you want to be a, a banking professional. We have increased that because that was pre predominantly in the retail space. We have also improved uh, um, 
you know, certifications in financial market, in enterprise risk management, in fintech, and so many other certifications that we're doing. As, you know, um, exams are written all over in Africa. Um, a good example to uh, just validate this claim is the fact that uh, just our, um, our graduation just in, uh, that was in July, we had over 2,000, you know, it was a meteoric from 800 to 2,000. That shows the acceptance. Uh, our institutions, uh, we have a route for bank academies. And these bank academies, um, for the young ones coming into, into, that, uh, into, into the industry, they need to be equipped with the right knowledge, fit for role, that will enable them to do banking proper. We have seen that increase, that meteoric rise in that area, that route. Then we are also having a program for the experienced banker. The charter bankers, uh, uh, we have a collaboration with Charter Institute of Bankers, Scotland, uh, UK, and the oldest banking institution in the world, the oldest university, to render, to uh, offer a, a, a degree in banking and finance, and that is uh, University of uh, Bangor in Wales. So that collaboration has, you know, Produce our executives are writing those exams, and that is giving them opportunity to even uh, get uh, 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 professionally qualified. I had with this of market survey, and most of them felt that 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 route was quite quite important. It was very good for them. What are we doing? We are trying to upskill because what is happening today is that we need to upskill uh, the the skills of our members in response to the current challenges in disruption. Someone had just said, in fact, we are thinking on should bankers begin to uh, learn how to decode? Because at the end of the day, what is happening today, we are seeing um, uh, technology play getting more and more interesting. Uh, you know, I'm told that even in an American university, no matter what the course you already did, you'll learn a little bit of coding. We're doing quite a lot of things to make sure that we remain attractive our in industry is accepting us more. We're having, we're turning out, turning out so many graduates, and we're seeing it. And most importantly, we are also paying uh, uh, very strong uh, uh, focus on ethics and uh, professionalism. In fact, right now, all our members are to write the um, uh, um, certification in in ethics and professionalism. We have commenced that from managerial level down. We're going to improve on that. As, as, as we speak today, about 20,000 has written it annually because trust is basic to our, you know, is, is, is basic to our profession because if people don't trust you, they can bring, give you the resource, their hard-earned resources. So we pay quite a lot of emphasis. With all that we're doing, we have collaborations with international institutions, uh, New York Institute of Finance, Lagos Business School, and so many others that um, even IFC uh, uh, um, and even the World Bank that we're having collaborative programs that is giving us that acceptance in the marketplace. And we, our, our own idea is how do we contribute to moving the knowledge uh, um, uh, skills, M M Mr. Lowe, knowledge and skills in this economy. Mr. Lowe, a, a quick one. Uh, a quick one here. We have about two minutes uh, to wrap up this uh, discussion. Uh, we appreciate you being here. When we look at the uh, rate of cyber fraud and some of these involving practitioners in the banking industry, is the CIBN collaborating with the ICPC, perhaps the EFCC, to bring these folks to justice? And perhaps you have an internal mechanism for punishing these folks and removing them and name and shame them. Yeah, the name and shame policy is entrenched in, uh, in CIBN. We have the uh, investigative panel, once we have um, a, a report of an infraction or of you know, uh, unprofessional conduct, that is taken to the investigating panel and that is taken to the tribunal. The tribunal has the equivalent of, uh, of a high court. In fact, it has been gazetted uh, uh, by the Attorney General of the Federation. So that enables us to discipline our members. We have a, on record discipline uh, quite a lot of them. But previously, we had uh, the current uh, ambassador to Britain, uh, Justice uh, Oguntade, as the assessor. Uh, currently, uh, when he was made uh, ambassador, we now have the former chief judge of Lagos State. You know. So that you know, tells you the power that we have. We have tried quite a lot of people, and it is our, in our policy to uh, you know, uh, name and shame. I don't know whether you have seen some of our publications in the papers where 
Anybody that has been found wanting of unprofessional conduct is advertised with name and shame and derobe uh, de them, so to say. And that's, that has been, you know, and that is why we're paying so much emphasis on professional uh, ethics and conduct, the moral conduct. We have, this is an open invitation. Please, if you have any unprofessional conduct by our members, you owe us a duty by letting us know we will discipline that person, especially if he's found guilty. And we will name and shame because we need to restore the glory of our old banking days where the banker is trusted and is given all their resources to you know, manage. That glory is being returned. I think we are in an exciting moment for the Charter Institute of Bankers and the banking industry, I can say. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Olowu, the president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. We wish you folks all the best. But again, if in case you need anything else for the government to do, I'm sure you have some government officials at your annual conference taking place this week in Abuja. I just wish for that. But let's give us, give us a sense of where things are going after this conference. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us on the program live from our Abuja studios. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Uchi Olowu, the uh, president of the CIBN.